Hello again, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Game Pass. Grab back your weekly podcast reviewing games from the Game Pass collection. Bring you three new perspectives from Ring Skill Range. I am the Commander Shepard of this episode. With me, Commander Shepard. 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 Uh, and also with me are Tulip Commander Shepard. 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 <laughs> Stupid intro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this week we did a list of requests, so thank you so much, Ron, for recommending that we check out Mass Effect 2 by Bioware Studios. Mass Effect 2 is a third-person action RPG where you are playing Commander Shepard, continuing his or her journey as you are trying to take the fight to the Reapers, a an evil robotic race that essentially comes by and wipes the universe and restarts it by destroying everyone and then letting universe like letting evolution take its place and starting the next generation of civilizations. Yeah, like, I was just thinking about that. Like if they destroy and reset everything, I it, it, five thousand years. That's is a not good point. I did not years. think about that. To get back to space. No, because I don't think they ever mentioned about them recreating. Oh, I guess we gotta go back and it's record the Diablo episode. <laughs> Thanks, Keith. You just exposed a massive plot hole to one of my favorite games, and I no longer like this game. Just kidding. This is just kidding. Transitioning to Gamer Pass. Uh, I'm just going to start. This is an absolute 100% definite game. Uh, if you haven't heard, if, you've, if you're new to this podcast, I have mentioned numerous times, Mass Effect is one of my all-time favorite series. I, Liz, I remember when we were dating... And you were like, oh, I'm going to fake interest in like some of your hobbies. And I was showing you some of my video games. And I was like, Mass Effect. I was like, this game is the best game. I showed you my collector's edition of Mass Effect 1 and its steel case. And I'm like, this game is so great. And you're like, oh, yeah, that's cool. Did you think that you would end up loving this series as much as me someday? No, because I don't remember that. <laughs> but I also, you know, as you say, have the memory of a goldfish. Is that the saying? Yes. Yeah. Um, and see, I don't even remember if that's a saying or not. And so, of course, yeah, this is a definite game. Absolutely. And I think I've been in kind of a funk where I've been giving a lot of passes lately. Yep. And this is what I needed because Andrew knew that this would be a game that I would be able to put down. Because you loved Mass Effect 1. I didn't finish this one, though, because I really... Well, yeah, not yet, because I, I think I'm getting fairly close to the end, but mm-hmm. I want to do like every single little thing and i'm not gonna rush it it's gonna be beautiful so well i mean i'm just i'm just not gonna stress out andrew and liz on this one and i'm gonna call it a pass (laughs) but it's i don't know i don't there's nothing there's nothing this is this is a i don't have anything bad to say about it i just cannot get into the series i i i did enjoy it and like i said i don't I didn't play it, and I'm like, oh, this is so miserable. This sucks. This sucks. This sucks. Like, I don't have a list of things that are awful about it. I just cannot get into it, and I don't know what it is. It just it, it does nothing for me, and, I, and, I, and I'm sorry to say it. Um, so, yeah, I'm just I'm going to call it a pass. So I just want to ask, though, Keith, real quick, and I, I don't mean to be offensive. I will. Keith, you. you're an idiot. Um, <laughs> so I actually, so I went back and listened to like our scores from the first Mass Effect because I was curious. And this is actually like at least half a year ago because that's when Andrew and I were planning to record this with a with a, um, uh, a guest host. Yep. And it fell through. But I forgot that Andrew like kind of teased you the entire episode because you pretty much did the tutorial. Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah, Keith and got I off Eden Prime, and that was such a one of the gone. big things with this game is the side characters yep. and your love for the side characters. Like I feel protective of them, yeah. and so I wonder, like going into it, were there any characters that you really cared about? Because I feel like that's such a big thing in the game I mean, for I would- me. Well, I, I probably isn't spoilers because I probably did the same thing and just got, I don't know, barely out of all of that. But I, there were certainly some of the returning characters that I was like, oh, cool, they're back. That's nice to see. I did not care. It pulled zero emotional strings for me. I just carried on <laughs> with my life. And I I just, like I said, it's not like it's it, – there is no – there is nothing I can point to that's like that's the thing I can't stand it that every time this happened I just was oh I just did not care I I couldn't this this is like physically hurting me here you can't. 
Because it's like, I feel like because this is the second game, the first one, I cared about it, mm-hmm. like the character just, so much that I had to replay certain parts because act- somebody accidentally died. And I was like, I can't handle this. To me, the intro, the intro of Mass Effect 2 blows my mind. Like, how, how did you not feel anything with the intro of Mass Effect 2? I don't know. Like, I know you didn't beat Mass Effect 1. But just like how how this game starts, I, I still remember when I, this was one of the few games with the Midnight Launch. I went, I was like, yes, I cannot wait to play Mass Effect 2. I went to the Midnight Launch, went home and I played it. And I remember the intro just like shook me. And even now playing this game again, I'm just like, God, that intro is so good. the game and wept. Just... I did. I did. I, you you are mocking me, but I legitimately did. No, I'm not mocking you. That's really? the worst part. <laughs> Just assuming. I well, and and here's the thing. I would do I would do one of my old game, but not for me. But I'm not allowed to do those anymore. I get in trouble, so I'm just. I appreciate so just, the honesty because it definitely felt like the first time around. You really didn't care about the game, but you still gave it a be, game. And, and so I feel like this is an honest, an honest but here's, uh, beginning. But here's the so spoiler good. of it: is I'm gonna probably talk about Mass Effect Two much in the same way that I talked about Mass Effect One, which is really mostly probably positively, and that I think it's overall very good. But I just didn't care, and I didn't it, like this. Like this isn't rat game for me. This is an annoying little kid getting unfortunately not eaten by rats. That game, I I would never want to play again. I actually was unhappy that we played this game or that game. But Mass Effect, I was. Are you talking about Plague Tale? Yeah, Plague Tale. Tale. Um, I I, I can't even say it because I just don't care that much. Both of them. But Mass Effect, I just I just wasn't into it, and that's the thing. And and I I wish like even I the combat. Was, I wish I was. Because I, 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 in some ways, I guess, feel like I'm missing out on something, but I don't because it does nothing for me. And so I just continue carrying on with my life. I will say, so at the beginning, obviously, there's, you know, this super crazy scene at the beginning. Yeah. Um, the beginning of the game, and honestly, throughout it, it is kind of like bittersweet with like, you're you're not with the people from the original crew at yeah and some of them you don't end up teaming up with again and so for me i going along i was like really almost nervous when i came across old characters because i was like please be on my team (laughs) like i just i didn't want people to be separated and and so i and then of course there's like a character i mean what what can we say we're talking about the story now yeah i don't want to be I know, I know. You know, too spoilery. I know, I know, because it's the experience. All right, so we're going to start with the story. So if you haven't listened to our Mass Effect 1 episode, obviously with Mass Effect 2, it takes place right after Mass Effect 1. So you are Commander Shepard. You are finding about this alien robotic race called the Reapers that essentially, as we said, come by every so many thousands of years and wipe out civilization. They wipe out the galaxy and restart it by destroying everyone. So you learn about this plot in the first Mass Effect. And so this is essentially continuing the story of Mass Effect 2. If you have played Mass Effect 1 and you were kind of like, eh, I would say play Mass Effect 2. Mass Effect 2 is my favorite. I think it works so well and it builds off so well off the first one. But yeah, we're going to try to avoid spoilers because the things that happen in Mass Effect 2 are just awesome. Wait, so I just Googled it because I was like, 5,000 years is not right. Is it 50,000? That's still not enough. Because one of the things that popped up says 50,000 years. I, yeah, it's probably 50,000. Yeah, That's it's not. Right. You guys were saying 5,000, right? Well, Keith said 5,000. I said, I can not remember I mean, how many years I'm it was. I'm just it's, saying, it's a lot 50, of 50,000 is still not enough years. I'm, 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 I'm quite certain that's not enough. It is kind of odd. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying again. But I, I mean, that's that's splitting. Hairs. Oh, I know. It's splitting it's, it's me poking fun <laughs> at the game, at, like at the story. Honestly, like I don't actually care. But it's yeah, it, it, it actually doesn't make sense. 
Depending. But the choices you make in Mass Effect 1 carry over to Mass Effect 2. So relationships you built, romantic relationships, some of the choices of whether you want to eliminate the species or save the species start to carry over. Because all your choices that you make in Mass Effect 1, 2 will carry over to Mass Effect 3 and kind of the end game of what's going on. Well, that's something that kind of bothers me. Yeah. About, when you're talking about the relationships... I don't like how... So for the first one, I accidentally, accidentally. hooked up with somebody. <laughs> Who was it? it so Shepard hooked up with uh, Caden. Yep. I didn't mean for that to happen. I'm just glad I you wish, didn't hook up with uh, racist Ashley. That would have been really you, awkward. I, <laughs> didn't I replay it so that I could switch them? I don't remember. The runny, it, it, I played it twice, right? I played Mass Effect 1 twice. Oh, you did? That's yeah, right. You I loved Mass like... Effect 1 so much that you played it twice. Wait, so did you hook up with Caden both times? Oh, maybe I only like fully... I don't know. No, you definitely beat it twice. I don't know, but I do know that it was an accident. <laughs> okay. And so this You one, accidentally I... had sex with them. <laughs> I... And then I was asking you, like, depending on who you were in a relationship with the first one, I wonder if it carries over. So if you were in a relationship with a character that you yeah. end up being in the crew. So I, cause I it was very disappointed in Caden. I knew it was a mistake <laughs> when it happened, but this one, do not, do not pick Caden. He, was, he wasn't a very good lover. No. <laughs> so what I mean good. is he was disappointing <laughs> with what happens in the second. No. Oh my gosh. That's not what I meant. In the second game, his reaction to seeing you again, because like I said, everyone separated. Yeah. I was very disappointed in kind of his reaction yeah. and stuff. Well, That's okay. Well, if you... <laughs> How did I word it? I I word things so terribly all the time. Well, there's no way to word that properly. Well, I mean, I, or so to, to piggyback back off of what Andrew is saying here was that if you didn't complete Mass Effect 1 at the very beginning of the game, it gives you a little cutscene to fill you in on all the events of Mass Effect 1. But it gives you a little choose your own adventure, if you will, so that you can semi make those decisions in, in one. And if you did what I did, well, Caden just wasn't in Mass Effect 2, so. What? You killed Caden? He picked Ashley. You picked the racist? I did that. Solely for the re your two reactions because I knew you guys would be mad that I saved Ashley. <laughs> she's she's a hardcore racist. But I but knew I, you guys. I think you're proud that you picked the racist. I'm not proud that I picked the racist. I'm proud that I annoyed you guys. <laughs> that was exactly why I did it. You didn't just annoy us. I bet you annoyed majority of our listeners who have played this game. <laughs> Nobody likes Ashley. Oh, I don't like, like Ashley either. I just... I don't really like anyone, so it was pretty easy. <laughs> uh, oh my God. I also find it interesting that I, I was going to say it's a small world. It's a small galaxy because I feel like there's so many. She's in the middle of everything. So, yeah. for instance, I mean, with Rex and Morden. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. she's friends with them both. Yeah. One of them is, like, severely damaging the other species and it's like this i feel like that hasn't really come to a head yet like there's so many things that i'm waiting to happen and same with like jack and cerberus like there's just it's all connected and so for me i feel like things are going well right now but in mass effect 2 i feel like things are just kind of on the edge I just want to pause for a moment and say, good job, Liz. You just, like, said some story elements really well without spoiling things. Thank you. Because you, you tend to, like, really just, like, go into things and just really spoil things. But I felt like you, you worded that so elegantly oh, that you didn't spoil things. And I just, good, good job with that. But... Because I feel I, like this is getting more into the side stories. And there's I, a lot of I, new characters that I, have I side also stories. don't want to respond to the things you just said because of Mass Effect 3. <laughs> so No! <laughs> Can I just say, I think I saw online that our fourth and silent co-host gave Mass Effect 3 a 10. What? Yeah. Lord. I could be wrong, but I thought I saw that. We're gonna need we're gonna need to visit oh. that at some point. <clears throat> oh my word, are you serious? But who's your favorite side character? I'm really curious with you. Okay. I, oh, it's Miranda. It's, 
So uh, <laughs> to to quickly tell some people, uh, he's got a little bit of a crush on Miranda. We no, <laughs> we we played uh, Mass Effect Legendary Edition. Well, I played the original Mass Effect, but uh, specifically for this episode, we played the Mass Effect Legendary Edition. So it's obviously improved graphics, improved gameplay, yada yada. Um, but Miranda, Andrew thinks she's a hottie. <laughs> I'm not the only one, Keith. Thank you very much. So the internet can be okay. really creepy and gross, and sometimes that's just how things are. But this is a video so game. So, Keith, who's your Mass Effect crush? Oh, I love Garrus. Garrus is absolutely fantastic. He's just, he's uh, just the best. If, if you're following us on a Twitter, uh, me and Liz had a nice conversation about Garrus. <laughs> and how, oh, Liz, yeah, actually, please explain to our listeners. What do you think of Garrus? I think Garrus is fantastic. And I feel like I've been trying to get my character to flirt with Garrus. I kept accidentally flirting with, I think it's like the uh, um, assistant or whatever. I think her name is like Kelly or something. Yeah. Oh, I keep yeah, Kelly Presley. I keep accidentally flirting with her. And I'm like, no, we're not starting that. No, I you, wish I, I wish I told you. Uh, you can start a relationship with Kelly, but it has no consequence. She's literally like her whole being is to be a side chick. I, I don't know how to word that better, but uh, <laughs> she is like someone you can kind of like flirt with, but like nothing happens. with. Uh, so she's like the practice oh, okay. girl. Okay. Okay. Good. Yes. I, I, Keith, Keith worked it worse than I did. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, I will say, so in my game, Shepard just full on said that she wanted, you know, hippity dippity with Garrus. And so I'm getting Dippity in the right Dippity. lane. <laughs> but Which, he, Garrus was your first target in the first one, right? That's you just, what? Garrus, you wanted Garrus in the first one, right? You just ended up hooking I, up I, with yeah, Kaden. Uh, yeah, on accident. I love you accidentally I have a relationship with Kaden. I feel like they kind of like swapped out characters. So like Kaden, you get Jacob. Yep. Rex, you get Grunt. Yep. But then there they are some like special new characters that don't remind me of anybody. But Yeah. Uh, so as far as stories goes, so Mass Effect 2, I definitely love way more than Mass Effect 1, just because I, don't get me wrong, I absolutely love Mass Effect 1, but the things that slightly annoyed me Mass Effect 1, I felt like were significantly improved in Mass Effect 2. The combat, the side characters, the, the side quests, uh, getting rid of the Mako, like, <laughs> I just, I hated the Mako. But, uh, yeah, Liz, like, you make a really good point of, like... The the side characters in Mass Effect 2, the stories are far more interesting. The characters are far more flushed out. And I just, I love the things that, like, I do agree. And it kind of annoyed me where, like, some of them are just kind of replaced. Where it's like, oh, we replaced this human with this other human. We replaced, you know, this Salarian with this Salarian. Or this uh, Krogan with this Krogan. And it's just like, ah, okay. But I... I felt like they did such a good job writing the side stories of all these characters that I, I loved just exploring the side quests. And their personalities are so different. Like, yeah. I, I forget how to pronounce it. Like, Zaid. Yep. Like, he's, like, kind of... So, Zaid is a DLC character. Oh, okay. And you're already transitioning me to this, but the side... The DLC characters, I don't care for. Which to me, ones are the, the DLC side characters? So, obviously him. Yep. Well, I'm going to ask you, who do you think are DLC characters? Because to me, like, this is my complaint. I felt like they felt so much like side characters. I feel like I haven't had much interaction with Thane. Nope. He's the main one. Oh. Who don't you like? That's why I am. I I think there's one or two that I don't have. And I think at Legion, I don't think I have. Yep. And Morinth, but... I don't want to spoil who Legion is. So you haven't learned who Legion is, and he's he is an awesome character. So I think I, so I have 11, 11 I think. But uh, uh, Zaid and Kasumi. Kasumi is the thief. But she's fun to play with because I like her sneak attack. Oh, yeah. Her abilities are really good. Zaid's abilities kind of suck. I don't I don't care for Zaid. I thought his story was okay at best and his abilities were just okay. But yeah, Kasumi's like Shadow Strike ability is awesome. But yeah, her story was just kind of like, eh, okay. And then like when you complete it, she just is like there. Like that's the thing you I always noticed with like who is a main character for the main game and who's a DLC character. Because it's like essentially once you complete their side quest, they're just there. And anytime you talk to them, you don't go into like a dialogue tree. They just say things like, Oh, thank you for helping me. Like they just repeat that over and over again. And it's like, okay. I, I understand. Also, 
think a lot of the side missions, this one, are very dark. Yeah. Jacob and Samara, their family. Yeah, did you do Samara's side quest? Yeah. Yeah. And oh that my. That one was oh. that one was really dark, and of course Jack. I mean, her upbringing. Yep. So I just felt like they really get you invested. Some I forgot about like some of the people's side quests. So obviously, with if you've played Mass Effect One, it uh, there is a morality system, a Paragon or Renegade system. So it's slightly improved with Mass Effect Two where you'll have everyone will have a quick time event where it'll tell you to hit a trigger to either do a renegade action or a paragon action. So there'll be like someone who is like, I don't know, holding someone hostage hostage. And there'll be a quick time event to say, Hey, hit right trigger to do a renegade event. And your character will quickly like, I don't know, assassinate the person or something like that. It'll do something that's considered slightly evil. Hence why it's called renegade. Paragon. Yeah. So this I is, don't want to be rude. Like some of the answers are rude. Yes. And this is, this is, I love the morality system of mass effect, but some of it was so heavy handed of like, Hey, do you want to consider genocide or do you want to save the species? And so some of the answers are so blatant. Like, why wouldn't I want to save the species? Cause you know, an alien race is coming to wipe everyone out. So it's like, well, why wouldn't I want them as an ally? So some of the choices in mass effect one were so heavy handed, of like, well, why wouldn't I do this? But in Mass Effect 2, with like Samara's like missions and stuff like that, you have these other missions that are kind of a little more gray. There's still quite a bit of options that are very like, why wouldn't I do that? Like, why wouldn't I go with the Paragon option? Because like, it's sometimes hard to do the bad option. <laughs> like I said, some sometimes of them are like... it's hard to do the good option where it's like, you're supposed to save somebody, but they're actually a bad guy. And it's just like, that is true. Do you know what? They're, they're murderers, but I know I'm like supposed to save them. And that's what I liked about Mass Effect 2. I felt like it had more gray areas well, of things that were going on. Weird, because I felt like there were a lot more decisions and consequences in Mass Effect 1. And Mass Effect 2 was way more quick action events. I don't think there was that many. The quick action, the left trigger, right trigger? Yeah. I where know. I feel like the first one, it was a lot more making oh, it didn't decisions. Ha- well, it didn't have it at all in the ha- first one. Yeah, no, but the first one was more making decisions and having bad consequences like that, the suicide yeah. side mission and stuff. So I felt like it was actually easier. And there was one point where I saved um, right before I went into like this cutscene. I didn't know it was coming. And I accidentally missed the left trigger. I think I was going for a snack or something. And so I went back because I was like, oh, no, this this girl's going to get shot. So I immediately just like went out of the game. And um, and that's another thing. If I don't know what to do, if there's going to be like a, a bad response, like if I'm uh, being asked questions or something, I'll just like you can't pause the game. But it uh, there's no like time or anything. I'll just go to Google and be like, how do I how do I get her loyalty? <laughs> I cheat is what I'm saying. <laughs> See, and now obviously you don't have to put down the controller and go to Google, but I kind of actually wish that the game had like a more timed element to the dialogue. Cause I don't know, maybe I'm jumping into the weeds of, of audio. I, I don't know, but I, I can't stand how the dialogue goes in this game. I really, it, it's one of the things that I dis actually dislike about it is well, I think the actual voice acting itself is done well. I think the voice actors do a good job of speaking and saying their lines. Everyone is just saying a line to me. It's very, what? yeah, and, and nothing feels like an actual dialogue. And be, outside of like cutscenes are are fine, but like the actual times where I'm sitting there and I'm choosing things, I'm sitting there and thinking about it, and it's like this. 10 second pause, five second pause of me kind of filtering through the options. I reread it a couple of times and then and I go and uh, da, 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 da. and then they say their line very, you know, rigidly. And then it goes back to me to read. And I just, I don't like that. I don't think that it feels like an actual dialogue when I'm, when I'm the one choosing things in the game. So see, I actually think it's interesting when you're picking a dialogue, um, you'll sometimes get like a couple words and I'll select it and the conversation will start going and it's not what I expected. Yeah. Um, See, that's the thing that I, I feel like we complain about that all the time is it's like, it gives you an option of what the dialogue is going to say. And then they say something that is like in context, what you chose, but they don't say what you chose. 
And so I, it's another one of those things that you're like, oh, I'm going to choose this because it doesn't sound that bad. But then he's actually like kind of a jerk about it when he says the actual line. I feel so, like uh, the only dialogue that I can kind of agree with Keith on is Jack. That's the only character that I kind of feel that way with. What do you mean? She's very dramatic. Yeah. With everything that she says. It's very true. And I, so I do kind of feel like the conversations with her are very rigid and just like, I just don't want to talk to her. See, I, I do not, like, key saying is something we complain about, but I fully understand this option of like how Mass Effect goes of when someone's like, oh, we need to do this thing. And your options are yes, maybe no. And so you hit yes, but your character obviously doesn't just go yes. Sure. Like your character goes into a a dialogue and it's like, I understand the option because it's like what your character says is like three or four sentences long. And like, are you going to post that for a choice option of like, yes, I think we need to do this thing because of this and that and this. Like that just takes up all the screen. No, but there are times where it's, it's, I don't want to say misleading, but it's written in a much more way that it's like what's misleading about I, yes no and maybe it, that happens like maybe five percent of the time the majority of the options are actually much more involved uh like text of what you're seeing they're probably like a like a decent sentence sometimes too yeah and so there's there's a lot more context that you're kind of assuming and then there's more added to the dialogue that doesn't fully fit now I don't think that any of them were so, I don't know, so closely related that I'm like, oh, I didn't think he was going to be a jerk about it completely. But I don't know. It's like more harsh than you were expecting or whatever it may be. I just the biggest thing is that I I felt like that the dialogue just felt like two characters sitting there reading lines back and forth at each other. And it didn't feel like a dialogue outside of a cut scene where dialogue was already scripted and actually cut to be a dialogue. I disagree. With well, that. I know because but this is, too. this is, but your, I respect okay. your opinion. <laughs> this is your, I like, your Liz was even looking at me like, no, <laughs> I mean, I respect your opinion though. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, I don't have, we don't have to agree. I'm not offended by you saying I'm wrong. I, I just, I, there are games I, where I felt that way. I and never it does felt take like I, out. it's, it's one of the things that for me never made me feel connected to the game or why I felt like I cared about any of the characters. Cause I was like, okay, cool. They're just going to say their next line. And I'm just going to wait for that until I can choose more things. And most of the times I was choosing the, like, screw you options. Cause I just thought they were funny. I was just like, I don't know. I'm going to be a jerk to everybody basically. <laughs> Yeah, how did you guys play? Did you guys play Paragon or Renegade? Good or evil, I should say. I tried to do Paragon. Um, the good thought, option? Yeah, I mean, sometimes, like, the right trigger would come up, and I learned that, like, sometimes it just makes the battle easier, but you're still going to have the battle. It's just a cheap shot that makes it easier for <laughs> yeah. you. So, I mean, um, but, yeah, usually I try to, I try to be nice. But you keep- um, I mean, I did every Paragon option that came up. I don't know whether it was Renegade or Paragon. I was like, sure, I'll hit the button. I'll just make it do that thing. So I did all of those. Uh, When it came to dialogue, I don't know. I felt like I kind of just went with whoever I talked to, whether I disliked them more or less than the person that I was doing the thing for. So if I don't know if I was, you know, on a mission for uh, what's her name, running the, the club there. I don't know. But yeah, if I, if I didn't like the person that I was doing it for, I would, I don't know, probably be like, no, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take control of the situation. Ah, what was the one? Like, I think something about sharing the data information. And she's like, you can't do that. Oh, what the shadow broker? Yeah, and I was like, nah, go ahead and do that. Cause I don't care. <laughs> I, I don't know. I just, whoever I felt like I was benefiting more in the situation, regardless of like the blue or red option and the text, I guess. Uh, did any of you punch the reporter? I either didn't get to it I or don't I don't think, think I, I did. I do with that it's, part. It's, was... a, it's a pretty infamous scene of uh, Mass Effect 2 of being able to punch a reporter. I mean, I probably that would was if I... the one that was like at least six months ago. So I don't remember, but uh, I don't think I did. Uh, so I played, I, I, I describe as morally gray, but I guess I'm slightly more renegade because uh, I enjoyed uh, I, the renegade options are more funny. 
specifically, like I said, punching reporter. That being said, please do not punch somebody as a response. I don't think it's an actual appropriate response to somebody. But yeah, you end up, there's a very infamous scene in Mass Effect 2 of a reporter who's like, obviously you're trying very hard to save the galaxy. And she calls you out for something really stupid of like, you weren't able to save a, a colony. And so there's a quick time event of a renegade action and you just punch the reporter <laughs> instead of answering her question. And so like something, cause that's how I kind of do feel with this of like, you're the only person in this picture who is trying to save the galaxy. You keep telling everyone, Hey, the galaxy is going to end. The politics argue about it. People at the station that you're trying to convince argue about it. But you're the only one who's like, I am seeing this firsthand. Please, we need to do something about this. And so I do kind of like the option of just like, sometimes you just need to punch a reporter for being a smart mouth. Yeah, I don't <laughs> Liz, Liz is looking at me very judgmental. It's, like, <laughs> It's just one of those things like it's things are happening on just this grand scale and you're just treated like this commoner who is like yeah how dare you walk in her presence and you're like i'm sorry i've only saved the galaxy three times now but you, you exactly but by all means i will come and polish your shoes yeah let me do that exactly so, yeah it's just another one of those games where i'm like i i couldn't care less about any of these people you're all a bunch of dummies i'm the only one doing anything and and you have no idea you're over here quabbling about soup or something I don't, there's exactly there's no about soup, but there should be more soup in Mass Effect. I think I would like Mass Effect if there was more soup in it. <laughs> that could be your final review. You know, it needs more soup. But it's just funny because Andrew, you really don't like soup that much. No. You're not a soup person. Oh, and Keith, you've talked about making chili, no, and soup. so I'm assuming chili is not a soup though. It's kind of like a chili. It's a very least a cousin like- to a soup. But Andrew doesn't even really like eat chili either. I love, I love grilled cheese and tomato soup, though. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, that's the only thing. I'll make homemade soup, and he's just like, mm. but Keith, are you a are you a, you're a soup person? Oh then? my goodness, that is I I don't care for the cold weather in the least, but there is nothing like soup season. Uh, just, just top three soups. Uh, <laughs> go top three let's soups. See the f- I make broccoli and cheddar. Um, I make a corn chowder and soup at Toscana. Uh, uh, chowder, that's a chowder. No, no chowder is no, a soup. No, that's still yeah, a soup. I, okay, a hot dog is a sandwich or whatever you want to... Let's not go there. Chowders are <laughs> soups. You don't even like soups. You don't get to be involved in this conversation. Liz, you go. That was only two. Well, I said soup at Toscana. The, like, I, um, there's a... Oh! I, 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 I did. have a recipe for the knockoff of the Olive, Olive Garden one. It's delicious. I... I don't even know what that is. I really just thought that your words got garbled. <laughs> I was like, what are you, wait, where's the third one? Keith, you um, got a stroke there. Could you repeat that? that? I thought you were just still, still bad-mouthing Andrew, and I was like, I was here for it. I was just going <laughs> to Carry on. Carry on. Well, thanks. Thanks, um, wife. I don't, do you know what? I, I, I don't have a favorite soup. I, I make a lot of lemon chicken oars, though. Mm. Uh, just because it's it's easy and like if you're sick, I'm not, you know I just it's a perfect like sick soup. But then hold on, we worked at Panera. Spicy. You can't name soups. No, I'm just like saying like fa- like I that, but I'm just saying that like, that's what I make all the time. Oh. I mean, of course I like broccoli. Cheddar broccoli and cheddar is actually really easy to make. All those things and um spicy oh, kimchi it's, does ramen. It, does it have just broccoli and cheddar in it? Believe it or not, it does. It has other things though. So. <laughs> You know, Mr. Funny Pants over there. But I feel like I'm in the middle. Like, I, I like soups, but I just feel like I'm not good at making them, so I don't have it a lot. I, yeah, I, I would I would eat soups just about year-round if, if it makes sense. But, uh, My mom used to make corn chowder growing up a lot, so and we had one in Tennessee. We went on a vacation. Well, if your mom's making it, it's corn and chowder. Chowder, yeah. She's got a thick accent. Chowder. Chowder. Um, but the one that we got in Tennessee had like ham and clam juice in it. When Delicious. Did we have that? clam juice for me, but the corn chowder at um, the mill. Remember, I got it. I got a. I don't remember French oh. onion soup. We got a side. Too. There were biscuits, and you offered me some of your soup because you knew that I liked it so much. I don't remember that at all. Oh my! I gosh. will disagree with you to continue this. But yeah, Keith, French onion soup, that's another really good one. You mean to discontinue this? <laughs> yes. 
Um, but there's so much to talk about with Mass Effect. Gameplay wise, um, who boy, I so I wish that there were more guns. Like I like a game Disagree. where I find like a, a special gun that I love, but. I don't think it would have mattered that much because I loved, I had this um, snipe, sniper, that rifle that yep. when you aimed, it went slow-mo and it was my favorite gun. I didn't want to use anything else. I would just run out into battle just to get the ammo if I ran out of it Then because I was like, I don't want anything else. So the gameplay for Mass Effect 2, I think is drastically improved from Mass Effect 1. Mass Effect 1's combat wasn't bad but every weapon had unlimited ammo it just worked off an overheat system so it was just kind of like oh yeah you just have a gun you just gotta sit and wait for it to cool down but i actually liked so it changed drastically in mass effect 2 now you actually have to have to pick up these clips but i loved that the game kind of explained this transition of yeah guns now need these canisters that help cool down the weapons so it was like a way to explain as to why guns randomly went from unlimited ammo to now needing clips but i actually like the transition of it but it made combat so much more interesting because yeah in mass effect one anybody could use any gun they just may not be very good at it but they could use any gun and but in this one you were more you had to stick with what was in your class role so it made what role you're picking at the very beginning of the game more prevalent later on in the game and i loved it i i played on the insanity difficulty and i will say the thing that made insanity so hard was the lack of ammo but it really made me constantly switch up my gun of like okay now i need to get close to people maybe i'll switch my shotgun i have some distance i'll switch to my sniper rifle but it made picking my gun my loadout before a mission like more critical well i see- loved it Towards the beginning of playing the game, I struggled with ammo a time or two. Yeah. And I was actually really surprised about that. And and so for me, like, later on, I, I was way more careful. Where I'm playing at now, towards the end of the game, I feel like I'm I'm not really having that big of an issue. But I definitely run out of bullets for my gun a lot. Like, I have to search for the ammo. Um, but, yeah. What, what do you think, Keith? Um... So the funny thing is I have pretty much forgotten Mass Effect 1. So I could Shocker. I know, right? So I <laughs> I couldn't have told you that there was me. unlimited ammo in Mass Effect 1 versus not in Mass Effect 2. I think it's funny and kind of it's, it's clever how they how they do that for a game that's going to stay within, you know, one canon universe. So obviously if you're going to make that change you have to throw some something behind it, but outside of that I I couldn't have told you so I didn't remember. Um, I played on normal, I think, because I'll I just, just go ahead and play with that. But I just, I don't know. I thought it felt pretty easy. S- tell me if I'm wrong on this, but I don't remember the first one having the like auto skill use for your your compatriots there. Uh, nope, it had uh, it. All right, well, I, I don't remember using it, but that's what I did on this. Is I just had the auto use <laughs> skill. I think I do remember it had the auto level up, but I just, which I didn't do last time, but I did this time. And it just, I know that it was my choice to do that, but at the same time doing that, I think is just another one of those things that at least for my experience with, with the gameplay just made me feel not really connected to it. Cause I just didn't, I don't know. I wasn't invested in what my characters were upgrading or doing. I just went through, I, shot other space people with my space people and then i (laughs) had a bunch of dialogue and i said a bunch of things and then they said a bunch of things at me and that was that was what i did in mass effect and i hate how you're simplifying this game a lot of the worst ways there's so much saying things wait you mean in an rpg there's like dialogue and talking no i understand that rpg is (laughs) role-playing game (laughs) I, I'm not stupid. And Keith has never liked them. It's, I, I'm, I'm very hot or cold on them. It, and I know that obviously like Diablo is an ARPG, but so it's, I wouldn't compare that to Mass Effect per se, but I, I can enjoy RPGs, but this one is just too much heavy on the talking role playing, not as much on the uh. fighting and gameplay 
role playing, which is the part that I would do more. I strongly and I, disagree and, on and that. And again, on the at least medium difficulty, I just didn't feel like there was much more than just running around and space people shooting space people for space things. I so I think I played on normal as well. And I thought that it was kind of weird that, like, so I most of the time found it fairly easy, but every once in a while there'd be this, like, weird difficulty spike, and I would die a couple times. And there was actually one um, planet that I scanned, and the enemies kept spawning, and I was, like, there for, like, ever. I finally died. And then, so I was like, I don't want to kill all these enemies again. Like, it was, like, dozens and dozens. dozens. So I went, so I I redid it, because I had to start the combat from the beginning, and I was like, I'm just going to leave. I don't, and then I left and I said that I completed the mission, but they were just going to keep coming. I, I feel like there was, what? maybe I'm wrong, but I <laughs> feel like there was areas I... where if you just didn't push forward, they would keep spawning. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I just well, happened. I to pushed do... to my ship. Like I, I went back towards my ship, but they kept spawning. Oh, and, but it I think it was, there's literally one mission. And I think your objective is to fall back to the ship. <laughs> I think, I think, think that I, is your objective. But, no, but the, the the thing that's playing, telling you to go to your skate pod, I yes, thought it was a recording for the people before oh. <laughs> that had died there because the ship had crashed and I was just confused. I'm not blaming the game. I knew that there was something wrong where like, because it, it said mission completed. I thought it was the old recording for the people that died. And I was so I was like, I thought I was supposed to kill all of them. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, but anyways, that what that's not the difficulty spike that I was talking about. I'm just saying that there are a couple battles that I did die. Um, but I just that was the one thing that I just didn't understand with the game and my bad. Yeah, there's just it, but it's I, always uh, weird when games do that when you do the objective that you complete it. It's weird. So I'm gonna go back though. A thing you said, Keith, which was very wrong. Um, <laughs> you were you were talking about of like. You shooting space dudes with my space dudes, and then we talked about things, and there's, like, too much dialogue. This is one thing I think Mass Effect does so well. I feel like the dialogue is way more efficient than a traditional RPG. Like, case in point of, like, a Final Fantasy game or The Witcher. Like, you could dig and dig and dig through, like, what's your religion? What's this? What's this? What's your town about? Like, what do you guys do for fun? Like, you could go in these crazy dialogue trails, but I feel like Mass Effect is so much more efficient. When you're given options of like talking, there's clearly, hey, these are for the main mission if you want to keep going, and the left side is if you just want more lore and story. So I feel like Mass Effect is an RPG for people who aren't crazy about RPG, because I feel like Mass Effect 2 has way more action than Mass Effect 1. I felt like there was more options of you going into combat and doing these missions. And that's what I loved about it. I, I, I personally feel like Mass Effect is a RPG for people who aren't crazy about RPGs. I'd agree with that. And I also think that this game, I, I don't really remember the first game if I would agree with this because I don't remember it as well. But I felt like this game was pretty linear. Obviously, you you know pick the side missions where you want. But what I mean, like in the mission, like... There are times where things seem like they're like, you know, you have to get this done, but nothing's timed. It's more relaxed. But I did feel like this game was a bit more linear than the first. Am I remembering it wrong? No, I I see where you're coming from. And I actually thought like... I don't think it's linear. I think the game just gives better direction. Maybe, but I was actually thinking when I was playing it, I'm glad that nothing was timed because I don't like to deal with that. (laughs) It stresses me out. Yeah, but I feel like for a hardcore gamer, it might be fun to have that option because there were certain times where it's just like you know you know you have to get to the escape pod kind of thing do you wish that there were timed things in this no okay i mean i i agree but i, I just felt like there were so many times that they made it seem like oh this needs to there's be a couple now. moments that are timed but i think it works well and they weren't hard like i said i played on insanity and it wasn't like oh if you're playing on insanity like you could only escape with like five seconds left on the clock no it was still very forgiving the i few- mean if i did it you know, oh. then it must be easy. But this is one thing I loved about Mass Effect 2. The combat is so drastically improved because I know we talked a little bit about the gunplay, but we talk about the abilities. The abilities when it comes to Mass Effect 2 are so fun and they play with each other. Like they didn't really play that well with each other in Mass Effect 1. 
But with Mass Effect 2, you know, we talked about before, you know, people have biotic about powers, which are kind of like force powers with Star Wars. You have like these supernatural abilities where you can lift people in the air or throw them or something like that. But it doesn't end there. Like if you're someone who can have like shoot a concussion grenade, like if someone throws someone in the air, you can hit them with a concussion grenade and it does like double damage. Like the gameplay actually switches and is so much more improved to who you are taking with you when you go out on a mission. So I don't know what classes you guys picked. I played a soldier. What did you guys do? I don't remember. I picked it so long ago. <laughs> no, I've been playing all this week, but like the beginning of the game that I played, it was, I mean, I remember of like, you know, the cutscene at the beginning and all that kind of stuff. I think you're I an remember. infiltrator. Cause I think you had some, yeah, you definitely had some tech abilities. You could hack AI. Yes. But yeah. did you have biotic powers? I shot like the fire. You might've just been like, um, I don't remember. I can't remember. Do you know what you were, Geith? Cause I thought, I don't know if that was part of the, the little story thing at the beginning that I did. No, I don't know. I think I was, I mean, I had like concussion grenade or not, uh, like a flashbang grenade, uh, incendiary ammo. You might have been a soldier like me then. Okay. But I don't, I don't know. Except but it, the, it, between that and then just, I don't know, my my ally skills and everything, I just had them set to auto. So I wasn't really paying attention. I was just trying to, you know, shrink the little red bars above my enemy's heads is what I was trying to do. Well, that healing was different as well, right? Because you said in the first one you heal yourself. Yeah. In the first Mass Effect, you had health packs. But, but in this, this one, one's more hear... about just taking cover and you regenerate health on your own. Yeah, and that you heal your allies. Yeah. yeah, which there was only one battle, and you actually were watching me play. When you watch me play, I do so much worse. <laughs> there was only one battle that I ran out of med packs to um, revive my teammates. Yeah. And because I, there, I, Kasumi, I like her now, but when I first started playing with her, she went down all the time. Mm. It was awful. And that's that's who it was that was giving me all that trouble. But there are two little things, gameplay-wise, that I just wanted to bring up real quick because I know we're, you know, getting late. We've been talking for a while. Um, I love the hacking terminals. I thought that I would get sick of them. The minigames? Yeah, where you, like, have to... I mean, sometimes with the ones that you connect the the two images that are the same, like, they're, like, the wires, um, I would accidentally just, like, hit it at first, and I'd be like, crap, and then I'd guess. (laughs) And sometimes you only get one shot. It did happen very often, but every once in a while. What was the other one that you made? The other ones where it was, like, um, these text dialogue boxes that are going up, and you have to select the correct one. When I first started doing that, I was like, why does it keep making me lose? I didn't realize it because you couldn't go over the X. But I remember I had you do it once and you failed. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah. You thought I'd forget, didn't you? Remember, that remember, was like a month ago. You failed in a game one time. <laughs> I know. Yeah. This, the, that literally was like a month ago. <laughs> because you never you never let me down in a game. No, that was like half a year ago. It's been uh, yeah, a that's long true. time. Yeah, it's actually been way longer Maybe than that. even longer than that. And then one little thing that I didn't care for, I did not see the point of refueling the ship. I had so much money and they just kept making me go to the fuel depot yeah uh, why have that but that's another thing i love so they got rid of the mako but you still need like resources so the way the game does is you're just scanning a planet and just shooting probes on the planet and you automatically get the resources you gotta buy the probes is that the, but I that's love the that reason why that's a fuel depot i'd rather do that than the stinking mako the mako is awful i'm just saying i don't understand why i have to buy fuel i have so much money like, I don't... Yeah, it seems just, a little redundant. Yeah, same with buying the probes. Just give me probes, man. Yeah. But, so, I will say with the DLC, they did bring back the Mako. There's the DLC called Firewalker, I do believe. But they bring back the Mako, but instead of it being this weird six-wheel ATV kind of vehicle, it's now a hovercraft. And did you do it at all, Liz? I know Keith did. I'm not even going to bother asking Keith. Which one? <laughs> the Firewalker missions where you get the Mako, but it's a hovercraft. I, I did, I know I did at least one, you jump in it, right? Yep. And yeah, there was one, I could not figure out how to get to the last one, and I had to look up, a, only walkthrough I looked up for this game. Oh, really? And I looked it up, and I, you have to go backwards, and then, I felt like an idiot, but I just, <laughs> I, but it looked like I could make it, and I was like, it looked like a centimeter off, and I kept trying, and I was like, there has to be a different way. But I think it's funny that they brought back the makeup, but it's like yeah, a Yeah, I thought that was, I thought that was funny. <laughs> 
Uh, okay, we need to like pick up because we were, uh, there's still so much I could talk about with Mouse Effect 2. But I feel like we need to pick up a little well, bit. Well, with uh, it's just switch to music then. The music, the soundtrack to Mass Effect is so good. In the voice it acting, just the, the audio in general. Yeah. I, I couldn't complain about a single thing with the audio. And that's the thing, too. With like I One thing I, I forgot to mention before, I like that when... Um, I'll save it for, for graphics. <laughs> um, <laughs> but the voice actor, there's it. a lot of famous actors in it. And there's yeah. a lot of the voice actors that sound like famous actors, but they're not. Um, but I think the voice acting is great. Uh, music is great. Like the characters in the voice acting and Mass Effect 2 is so good. Like I love the elusive man. Like oh, he's this new Martin character that's kind of introduced. Yeah. That so one I good. Picked up on right away. I was impressed or proud of myself. Yeah, yeah. Very, very distinct. Yeah, Keith. Uh, please tell us who uh, uh, Captain Anderson is. What's the voice actor's name? I don't even remember. I don't remember what I said honestly, <laughs> but I had it very wrong. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, it's so wrong. Captain Anderson. Keith. Keith thought for sure the the actor's name was uh, Clarence, and his name was Keith David, and you went with Clarence. Do you do you know any celebrity who's na- has the name of Clarence Keith? Gosh, I I thought you were gonna go out to the fact that they have the same name. I who Keith and Keith. Uh, I mean uh, that that alone uh, that alone that. should have been enough. I just uh, I know, but no, Keith went with Clarence. The guy's name is Clarence. I don't know. I just made up the first name that came to my mind. Okay. <laughs> Can you name a single celebrity with the name of Clarence Keith? Clarence Cumberbatch. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Moving on. Okay, I'll, I'll give that to you. Uh, <laughs> then there's Seth Green returning, which I I forgot was in the first game. And yeah, Seth Green, fantastic job. I love him as the Joker, who's the pilot of your ship. Well, so I didn't see him as much this time, though. What? Oh, oh, that's right. You missed a. You haven't progressed far enough in the story. I don't want to spoil things. Well, so I but was, no, no, Seth Green's way more in this one than the first one. I was I was waiting for us to get to this moment, right? Because this game has a very, very big voice acting cast, like very big names. Yep. If Jack Black could be any one of the characters, who would Jack Black be in this game? Ooh, good question. Could he be a Krogan? I feel like Jack Black would make a really good Krogan. With the fact that he or, just voiced Bowser, Terry, I feel like he could oh, do a Krogan. Actually, yeah, that's good point. Otherwise, I was going to say Terry Crews could do a Krogan. I just can't picture it. Because they're just like, they're, there's no silliness in a Krogan. That's where I... That's but, true. But what if he's the one silly Krogan? <laughs> just Jack Black. I mean, I would love that, but I just don't think it would happen. Mass Effect 4, let's also, do it. Also, I couldn't remember his last name, but... Um, Trevette from Walker, Texas Ranger, the actor's name Clarence Gilliard. Oh, there you Thank go. Thank you, Liz. Good job, Liz. Liz. I knew his An name actual was Clarence, answer. Found. but I couldn't remember his last name. Yeah, Walker, Texas Ranger. Good job, Liz. You did Keith's job for him. <laughs> Man, That because that, that legitimately was a question. I'm like, is there a famous actor with the name of Clarence? Liz found there one. Is. He was also in Die Hard. Man, good job, he Liz. literally the only person, well, not the only, the number one person that comes up when you search Clarence on IMDb, then it goes to, I think some, <laughs> it, actually by the third person, you go to Clancy Brown. And so you really just start jumping up. <laughs> but Benedict Cumberbatch was in the book of Clarence. So, I mean, I was kind of close. That is the book I don't of know. Clarence. It's on IMDb. <laughs> it might not have come out yet and they're just filming it or something, but he's listed on it. What? But uh, but back to your original question. What if Jack Black? Uh, what are the what are the names? I think they're the Elcor. They weren't as much in this one, but oh, they're yeah. the uh, species that that don't have emotions, so they yes! speak their emotions. What uh, if Jack Black played one of those characters? I love that. You just never stopped. Talking. Yeah, but now that oh, I did not think about it. But yeah, I, I don't remember meeting many Elcor in the second one. There's one that's a bouncer. If, if at, there's a on... That's right. Yeah, he's a bouncer, that, which is that awesome. That you have an Elcor is a bouncer. He's like, yeah. I have an appointment. <laughs> if you had an appointment, you'd be inside already. <laughs> if there was a movie, I'd be disappointed if they weren't in it. Well, we did mention, I think maybe the first Mass Effect episode, but there is rumor that there's going to be a Mass Effect show, and there's rumor that... Henry Cavill will be in it because he he posted 
a picture of a possible script of Mass Effect, and people are assuming he's going to play Garrus. Oh, I would have assumed he'd play Shepard. I... So I have a feeling they're going to actually try to do better than they did with a certain other show then. Because <laughs> I feel one? like... What? Which one? The Witcher? Oh, oh yeah. Because he was... he Wasn't he like... Yeah, he's Geralt in The Witcher, and he got kicked off The Witcher because he was the only person that knew the material and kept trying to correct I mean. people. And they kicked I them feel off. like he would go into it like with a group that actually wanted to do it justice. Oh yeah, but you you just go into it thinking automatically that they're they're gonna mess it up. Like I mean, they're gonna ruin it somehow. Well, that's but- why I think. If you're, I would rather have a true to life Garrus than a shepherd. They so I think if Henry Cavill voice. was doing it, they, I would want him as Garrus. No, they need the original Garrus voice. That is Garrus. Like, no, That's absolutely a good point. not. That's kind of um, a good point. There's certain voices in this, like switch. Uh, well, I don't, I don't want to be rude. There's certain voice actors that like switch it. I don't care, but you do not <laughs> go after Garrus who? or Rex. Who, who would you switch? Well, obviously, Polly. Yeah, Kasumi. Obviously, actually, you can have you a just, different race. You just have anybody. That's... Jack. Like, Morden has to be Morden. I see. This Thane? Is, this Give is it, what's so Thane. difficult. Like, now that you're saying this, I'm not like, I love all the voice okay, actors. Not that they're bad voice actors, but what I mean is, like, any of those over Garrus, 100%. Even though they're good voice actors and I don't want them to change it. But, like, when it comes to the aliens, they don't really need to. I also, like, because I play as Shep, like, Shepard as a girl or woman. Yeah, I did Femme Shep as well. weird seeing Shepard as a man. That would, that would be weird. Shepard originally, with Mass Effect 1, there really wasn't a Femme Shep. So, a male Shepard is, is first originally more canon. But with, like, Mass Effect 2 and 3, they made a Femme Shep. So, now there is a canon of both female and male Shepard. But I've always pictured Shepard as a male as well because that's how it was in the first Mass Effect. But I've been playing as a femme Shepard. No, there was both options in the first one. Well, with the, we're like I said, we're playing Mass oh, Effect Legendary oh, Edition, yeah, and no. so they they fixed it. Right when it. I said that, I remembered. But I will, yeah. yes, but if, because I played it like that, like I always just picture Shepard as. But honestly, if they did a show, I wouldn't care. I would not care if it was male or female Shepard. It wouldn't be the same though, because they're both fantastic actors and actresses. For both of the voice acting. I agree, but like for me, it wouldn't be Garrus. Well, see, it's funny because like, I played as a male shepherd, and that's why when you said Henry Cavill, I actually immediately thought of him because I, I feel like he kind of looks like the male version of Shepard in the game. Which, you, well, male shepherd is, uh, I think, well, yeah, like but, a default is like shaped. Which, I, I don't know. I, I don't really think about hairstyles. I'm just thinking about like his facial structure. Yeah. That's like he's yeah. He, he kind of looks like him. And then obviously hair, they just fix that whenever. But yeah, that's when you said that. But I, I mean, if he did a voice acting, I guess that works too. But I, I mean, it'd be the same thing. I don't, I, I don't know. Like you said, I, I'd maybe be more interested in watching a show. But I, I it, 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 it's more like in the reverse. Like I don't get a lot really excited about Star Wars games because I've never gotten invested in the Star Wars universe movies. And so, if you were to give me a Mass Effect TV show or movie, I might watch it, but I'm I'm not connected enough to the game that I'd be like, oh yeah, a new Mass Effect TV show. I gotta watch that. Or just a thousand percent, I would have to watch the TV show. And I'm not really a big Star Wars fan, but. I, some of the games we've played for Star Wars have been pretty great. Yeah. I, I've actually liked them. Oh, yeah. Them. They, may, they can be good games. I'm not even saying they're bad games because they're Star Wars. It's just that that piece of the game doesn't make it immediately appealing to me. The thing that only turns me off about a Mass Effect show is I'm assuming they're going to do live action. And the thing with live action, we've mentioned this before in previous episodes of like when you're doing a live action sci-fi thing, you got to obviously create these aliens and they got to have this prosthetic suit and blah, blah, blah. And it's so expensive, and so the studios tend to not show the aliens to save money, which is wild to think about it. Because when you think of, like, Star Trek, like, you always had aliens in Star Trek, and obviously that show didn't cost millions of dollars an episode. So it's like, I feel like you could scale back the prosthetics and make them slightly cheaper, and people would accept it. Maybe. But, like, that's what I'm afraid of, of, like, yeah, you're going to have a Garrus, but Garrus obviously is a very unique-looking kind of alien that, like, you couldn't just... I feel like he would just be in less episodes, and I don't want that. If 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 you're making a Mass Effect show, Garrus needs to be in like in every episode. Do you think they should do a movie instead? <sighs> that or an animated series, which I don't know. 
I'd, I'd maybe go. I'd, I'd be up for a movie. Probably would have to be. But I feel like it'd be hard to sell tickets. Yeah, I don't. I what? don't. I feel like it'd be hard to sell. That would tickets. absolutely be a direct to stream, mm-hmm. like an HBO Max or something. Yeah. Probably, and so to have less funding. But um, anyway, we, we graphics. There's, there's so much to talk about this game. The thing I wanted to bring up with graphics is I love that when you go into a certain area and you see the little crouch spots. We go for cover. You meet like battles coming here. Oh yeah, I know what you, you're talking about. You can about. just look at you. The you setup enter a room and you're and like, you know, oh, a battle's gonna happen. Yep, a battle's gonna happen. Here. I mean, I, sometimes you like, oh, here's some like the the med kits, and it's just yeah. like, and then you turn the corner, and you're like, oh, <laughs> oh, I see it. Yeah, right away. Uh, love, Every time I'm like battle. I love it, Liz. You're turning into a gamer because <laughs> that is a thing. People always say you know when a boss fight's coming up when a game gives you a bunch of ammo and health packs. Yep. Oh yeah. And there you go. I see and I think overall like visually I think the worlds are very cool. I think they and and I think probably especially cuz we're playing the legendary edition like graphically everything looks really nice. But I I did think that overall the map design and Liz you were kind of talking about this earlier and I didn't I didn't get a chance cuz Andrew gushed on about something else I don't know. And um <laughs> I felt like the maps were very linear and I didn't think it was a bad thing, but I, I, there was like a few branch off points here and there that you might find some sort of collectible. But for the most part, I, I generally thought the same as you were, you know, just like, okay, this is just the path to go. And and I rarely felt lost. So it wasn't like a bad thing. I just didn't think it was that bad when I was at least in like side missions or in missions. Um, whereas you needed the map or sometimes you're, traveling around the, the cities whenever i felt lost it wasn't based on the map because sometimes like there isn't a map for an area i never felt lost map wise but sometimes i'd be in a room and i couldn't find what i'm looking for and i'd hit the um the right stick yeah and sometimes like if you're in like too small of a space it'll just give you different directions and you're just, like it won't work properly versus like if you're you know, going up a hill, it tells you to go straight. That even, but that's the only time. Even in open space, there was one I was running into where it was like I was, it, I had to collect the dog tags or whatever, and I was, I needed one more, and it was kind of just, it was like kept pointing me back to my ship, mm-hmm. but I don't know. Then I just, it, I looked for another minute or two, and I was able to find it. It wasn't all that big of a deal, but it wasn't really actually pointing me toward the last dog tag or jack the side mission it, i need to find a, a blood smear and it would come up but it wasn't highlighted i wasn't close enough and i tell you i could not find that sucker <laughs> i actually had to google it i yeah I, I, it was in the hallway it wasn't every other thing was in the room it was in the hallway i that yeah but another thing graphically that that isn't great besides this like it's 99 percent fantastic um but the one percent the eyes go wonky man. Oh, oh yes i was waiting for keith to say oh, keith hates the eyes the, i do know not they do hate the eyes no if game. you look I don't at think the eyes are that bad if you look at the first season there's that clip that i posted um okay. that really awkward scene that they did oh yeah yeah and but that's mass effect one no though. it's it no, still what happens i'm saying is their eyes are wonky in that it happens in in the second one too that's like honestly one of my favorite clips like it is the weirdest scene see i think i just didn't notice it because i was too busy looking at marina's butt yeah, you gotta look up. Yeah, it, you gotta look at the eyes sometimes. They're, they're always like they're not looking at people, or they're just, I they're doing weird things. The eyes. So I'm I'm very glad that you pointed that out, Liz. Thank you. I think we mentioned the first Mass Effect episode, but with with the Legendary Edition, they reduced the amount of butt shots, uh, and I think it was specifically for Mass Effect Two. Because they always talk about, so Miranda was, was joking about with me in the beginning of this episode, of Miranda, her whole purpose of her character is that she was genetically engineered to be perfect. Her abilities, her appearance, everything. And so, like, obviously... So she's like the robot twins in, um... What was what was the, the Russian... Atomic, Atomic Heart. Hearts. Yeah. Yeah, so with the Mass Effect and Legendary Edition, they reduced the amount of camera angle butt shots so how upset were you about that i was very upset <laughs> i mean they they kept garris in all his perfections well, so um... it is funny <laughs> i because i i did notice it like playing it again and i will say i i actually don't 
care that they reduced it because now that I think about it, I'm like, man, there actually was like a little bit creepy. A lot of butt show <laughs> Yeah. Like like looking back at it and playing Mass Effect 2, it's like, yeah, there was a lot of angles of her but just butt being there's the picture. Eye candy for I mean everyone. they could have traded yeah. off and given us more Garrus butt instead, but they didn't do that. Mm-hmm. They just had to cut out Miranda. As long as they didn't limit it, you know? <laughs> limit Miranda. Don't limit Garrus. Um, um looking at achievements yeah. Um, obviously, this is for the collection, so the three yeah. games. I haven't played the third game. Andrew, I'm assuming you beat it. Wait, I beat what? Mass Effect 3. Oh, Mass Effect 3. I haven't played for Legendary Edition, but yes, I've beaten the game. Oh, okay. So this is for like all three, the Legendary yeah. Edition. Um, so uh, 2,915 gamer score for the three games. Andrew, you're for at... me? No, that's a total. Oh. <laughs> Andrew, you're at 1740 with 82 achievements out of 127 achievements. Keith... 365 with 26 achievements. 365. Jeez, Keith. And I am at um, 915 with 53 achievements. But this, Keith, this did you play shows, this game at all? I, I think this shows like the love, you know? It shows where yeah. Keith's love is. I think ours is a little bit more close. Well, the difference, but... I, I try for achievements. You don't. Yeah. No, I don't. I didn't look at them at all. So like I game. was looking at your achievements and like there's a lot of achievements to do a certain amount of like biotic throw or biotic lift or a hacking ability and you actually have to select your teammate. So even if you're not playing a class that has biotic abilities, you can obviously take teammates that have biotic abilities, but you have to purposely tell your teammate use biotic lift. And that's how you get the achievement. So Liz, you obviously don't care about doing that, but I do. So that's why I, I have a higher game score. Yeah. I, oh, I didn't even realize that was I a also... thing. I probably could have gathered up some of those. <laughs> I loved your face, Keith, when you opened that. <laughs> Oh, so what? Keith opening a beer. I, he was trying to be quiet. And was... <laughs> Trust me, I the amount of editing I have to do for Keith's vaping and cracking open beers and burping is oh okay, is a lot. Mr. Drunk Pants. <laughs> this is the one episode. Let's, let's let's get all critical when someone shows up drunk to the episode. Andrew. The one episode I drink before we record, Mr. Constant Vaping and Drinking with every episode here. Yeah, well, you're just not as cool as me. I'm just not an alcoholic like you is what you're saying. Sure. I, I need to drink <laughs> anyway. to deal with you. <laughs> Don't we all? That's how I get through this all right, podcast. so let's get to our final thoughts. Who wants to go first? Keith, you know you go first. Oh, dear. Why didn't you like Mass Effect? Well... I mean, I think we're just going to make it the obvious reason that there's not enough soup in the game. Uh, <laughs> and butts. No, Super I'm fine butts. with the butts. There's still a good amount of butts. There's still a good amount of butts. There is, yeah, there's. Yeah, but there's less, so he's got. You can knock. No, down no, no. You can as long as you still hit the the minimum number of butts, which they do. Um, <laughs> you can always add points, as Andrew will tell you, by adding, you know, maybe a dog butthole or things like those are like bonus points that'll really up the game. But no, there was enough butts in in Mass Effect Two, but not enough soup. So definitely going to need more of that if they make a Mass Effect Four. That said, I I don't know. I, I I said it from the beginning. I don't think there's anything that stands out as glaringly bad or negative about mass effect whether it was mass effect one mass effect two but there is just something about it that does not draw me in overall and and andrew you know this about me as a as majority sci-fi typically isn't my genre so i think just being in the sci-fi genre it kind of sets it off in in a realm that i'm not overly excited about and i just yeah i don't i I'm not saying anybody's even wrong that, or, or that I'm even right, whatever it may be. I just don't care for it. Um, so, so like it, if you like it, I think that's great, good, great, the best thing ever, but it's not for me. Um, so I don't know. I, I, I'm going to give it a 75 because in the five points are just uh. really because I think it's, it, it's a quality game, but I just, I, 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 I was I was excited when I thought we were going to have a guest host to do Mass Effect 2. And again, not because I knew I'd be miserable playing it, but just because I knew I wouldn't be excited. And I I just have to sit here and get yelled at about it because I don't love it as much as you do, basically. <laughs> so that's that's 10 points less than the first one. 
Wow. And he you gave him the first one eighty five, but I think you were being nice. if I were to play just Mass if I were to have picked up Mass Effect two the first time, I'd probably give it an eighty five. Uh, and I don't even remember that I gave it an eighty five, so that doesn't really have any bearing on it either. But that said, I probably would have. I would have had more excitement for it, but I just knew that I wasn't gonna be very excited about Mass Effect two and I so I didn't hate it. I just I I did what I needed to do to to show up here. And, and give you give you all what you asked for, because right now it's free. <laughs> so, I'm giving it a 99. Obviously, I Mass Effect Two is so good. So, like I said, if you played Mass Effect One and you were just kind of like eh about it, play Mass Effect Two. Uh, so Mass Effect One has a better overall story as like far as the campaign goes i think mass effect 2 its overall story is just kind of like eh like once it gets to the end it's kind of like once you find the conclusion of why things were going on in mass effect 2 i didn't think the payoff is that good but that being said the final mission at least is fun and like what you're trying to do to get to the final mission is really good the characters of mass effect 2 are so much more well written like mass effect 1 side stuff I felt was very copied and paste of like the environments look the same. The story wasn't as interesting, but mass effect Two, the character side missions are way more interesting. Like they got me way more invested in it. Loved it. I love the voice acting, the, the audio, the combat is drastically improved. I feel bad for you guys because mass effect two actually had a multiplayer and the multiplayer was actually a ton of fun. They had it also in Mass Effect 3. They improved it in Mass Effect 3. But unfortunately, it's not in the Legendary Edition. But the way the multiplayer used to work is you didn't create a custom character. You had to unlock them within like a loot box. But you would get like an Asari Bionic Commando. And so it was a certain character that you would keep doing runs with and personally level up that character. And it was actually a ton of fun. It was it was almost kind of like a roguelike of like you keep doing runs, proving your character, and your character would like keep carrying over that experience in weapons that you were unlocking and finding. But unfortunately, they didn't bring the multiplayer in the legendary edition. But yeah, the combat is just way more interesting, way more dynamic. And just when you're playing on like an insanity difficulty like I did, you really have to think about what teammates you're bringing with you. So there's just Mass Effect 2 is just such a fantastic game. If you have not played it, I don't know what you're doing. Like, just just check it out. It's such a good game. But yeah, I'm giving it a 99. The only thing I'd improve is just the overall story. Like I said, it's just not as good as Mass Effect 1. So now my, my score feels too low. And I'm going to up it. Because it was originally going to be 95. But I it's going to be a 97 now. <laughs> I, uh, this, this like warms my heart knowing that you love this game, like as much as me. Well, because there's like, there's a couple like nitpicky things. Um, yeah. like story wise, we're just like, oh, no, everyone's not together. And yeah, you know, there's, there's a couple things that, you know, I told you with like the gameplay and stuff, but it just, um, split in hairs, um, for Mass Effect 2, for the 360 on Metacritic, it, 96 and 8.9. I didn't look up the, uh, Keith gave it a 75. Oh, I'm sorry that I have an opinion. Is that not the point of this podcast? <sighs> and then, is. and and if I if I if I'm too nice to things, oh, it's, we we were rating this based on yeah. what you actually think of it. No, what was you you're supposed to you be? You physically <laughs> hurts me. I'm and pretty I'm, sure you tricky. rated Soccer Story that's higher than this game. Good, and that is Soccer like, Story. That should be 99. Was that this year? Best game ever. Was that this year? Soccer Story. I, I think hope so. it is because I'm making my game of the year. God, if Soccer Story is higher than Mass Effect 2, Keith. I don't think it was. It was actually last year because I remember doing it on the uh, recap. It probably was. Ah, I probably right. did. Hold on. Our uh, sec- secretary, let's look at this up. 72 for Keith for Soccer Story. Ooh, okay. You lucked out, Keith. Oh, man, I wish I had given it an 80. I'm going back and retroactively giving it an 80. <laughs> no, 76, just <laughs> spite Andrew. Woo. That was close. That was very close. I was about to kick you off. You know, uh, Andrew, there are people who don't like pizza. I, I, you know, there's people who don't like pizza. You can't. I, and I understand. But it was funny. Like, I remember, Liz, you were looking up Metacritic and, like, seeing people's reviews where they're like, oh, this game's talking about politics and 
there's people are talking about the relationships and stuff like that. It's like, do you not know what an RPG is? Like, God. Like, it's like playing a platform and be like, there's too much jumping in this game. It's like, well, come no, it's, on. You know, with like the RPGs, it's like there's not enough RPG elements. There's too many RPG elements. You can't, you can't win, you know? Yeah, it's story is just, it's so well written and I love the characters. I, I'm i sorry. I'm sorry. Not everyone obviously is going to like this game. I understand that. We'll, we'll move You're on. You're pretending do I, to understand do I, do that. I, do I, do I, I give this an Andrew 85 just, just to make you happy? No, Keith. No. Let, no. Me, let me adjust my score it to just, appease the other people around me. It just it, it at least warms my heart knowing that Liz is with me and understands why I love this game so much. But anyway, all right, let's finish here because there's still so much I can talk about this game. And I just I – just, uh, anyway – if you have any gaming suggestions, please go to GamePassGrabBag.com. We have all our links there. Uh, we are setting up a Patreon. We're just uh, hammering out some of the details of uh, what we think is appropriate, what people want. If you have any suggestions as to what you would like to see from our Patreon, please, we'd love to hear from you. You can email us at GamePassGrabBag at gmail.com or just hit us up wherever. Thank you all so much for uh, getting us as far as we have with this podcast. You know, this is just something, a side project that we've been doing for fun but we've obviously been doing it for many years and you guys keep coming back and listening. We, we love that you all keep coming back and giving us feedback. We appreciate it, but I've been your hardcore gamer host, Andrew. You can find me on Xbox live at firebirds. Zero one nine five two. Um, I've been Keith. If you have any Patreon ideas, just go ahead and send them to me on Twitter. Um, just so I'll tell them to Andrew cause he yells at me for what's your Twitter. It's, oh, that's, I think it's Keith Lynch one, two, one. I think I don't actually know. I haven't said it in so long, but you're welcome. You were just going to say, find me on Twitter and not give people I, any sort of hint. I I often like our tweets. I am some of the few people that like our tweets. Um, but that said, yeah, just send it. Just But just send them to me so that I can take credit for them and uh, make Andrew happy so that I, I will contribute to this. Um, beyond that, Ron, you're a longtime listener, so I I apologize for not liking Mass Effect 2. Um I rate I rate you oh, yeah. high as a as a listener, as a personal listener, but I got I got to give you a, a give your game a low rating here. I'm sorry. So I don't know. Maybe maybe give me give me a rogue like next time, and and we'll really boost those numbers. But but thank you, thank you for being a long time listener. Come on, Keith. No, I'm not gonna. I'm, your segment. I'm to, not gonna, Well, your segment's to rate our listener. What's well, out of oh, one to ten? What is well, he? Oh, ro- he's a nine out of ten, obviously. But his suggestion for Mass Effect Two because I didn't want to play it is like a four out of ten. But I mean, the game is a seventy-five. I think I said. I just think of Juan Swanson, and you can't really give that a low score. <laughs> so, but yeah, but uh, you remind me. Big shout out to uh, Javier from Nerd Talk Plus. He's uh, been a big help uh, having us figure out our Patreon and helping us with our Twitter. And I'm Liz Noob Gamer Tag. Come on, I'm Dean, and I'm on Twitter and Instagram at Liz Noob Noob Busy W. And I just set up Game Pass Instagram because we don't have that. Um, so Keith, if you want to post some cat pictures, <laughs> yeah, uh, I think it's the same password as. I, well, now we, if now wants we need to, to change all of that. <laughs> well, no, Andrew's obviously going to cut that out. <laughs> Guys, just figure out one of our passwords and you got all our stuff. <laughs> Andrew will cut that out. I don't know. I kind of want to keep it now. I don't know. It's probably not smart, but I don't know. It's kind of funny. <laughs> oh, oh, no. They're going to hack into the, you know, Instagram that has zero followers. I don't know, man. Uh, but please, a listener out there, please recommend Mass Effect 3 so we can uh, have Keith play Mass Effect 3. I don't know. And finish up this trilogy. Maybe we can finally get a guest for Mass Effect 3, and, and I don't have to ruin the episode for you, Andrew. <laughs> Uh, no, it's nice to have someone with a conflicting opinion. Oh, I'm, I'm, uh, uh, sorry, I'm, I meant to say wrong. Opinion. I might intentionally find everything wrong with Mass Effect Three, just so I can give it a fifty. He wants to play it now. This is a challenge. Just, well, I will say Mass, Mass Effect Three definitely is the weakest of the series. Good. No, not the weakest. But, yeah. Anyway, thank you all so much. We love you. We'll see you again next week. Bye, Bye guys.